What's up everybody, Liam Klishram here for another exciting Redshift tutorial. This week I'm talking about how to put product labels on the actual products. So I'm gonna go over how to put a product label on a bag and how to do a product label wrap around a can. So let's go ahead and jump in and get started. All right guys, so now that we're inside Cinema 40, I'm gonna go ahead and break down this scene a little bit. And then in the next part, I'll show you how to take a can and do the same thing. So for this one, this object here is UV mapped and it's called the sachet right here, sachet, I should say. Um, and I've got the material here and then all these seeds have got their material here. So I'm going to click on this and go into the shader graph and I'm going to just kind of rebuild this backwards so you guys can see everything. Uh, let me just expand this up for you guys and start disconnecting stuff. So here's our output. And then I've got a blender going and our materials and then some textures. All right, so for this one here, I'm gonna rename this just for ease and this is gonna be called label. And this is gonna be called transp for transparency. So in our label, I'll just go ahead and hook this up to our base color and we're eventually gonna change it and then in here, I'm gonna hook it up to our surface. We don't have any displacement going on. So you can see, this is just kind of a plastic paint looking uh, material, nothing special. Uh, what really happens is when we start adding in the textures and everything. And so um, I'll go into these properties so you can see them a little bit. So I've got a diffuse here with some roughness on it. And if you crank it up, it'll smooth it out a little bit. I kind of like it low down here. I've got a little bit of a blue reflection going on. And then down here, I don't have any transparency and everything's default. So I'm gonna connect our diffuse first and just show you what happens. So as soon as we plug this in, you're gonna look at this and think, man, this is really screwed up. Why has it got this white box around it? And there's like a little black box here and it doesn't look right. There should be uh, transparency and all that. And that's because this is just a PNG image and there's an alpha baked into it, but there's uh, two different types of alphas. And I'm not gonna get into the details now. You can go to Wikipedia and look them up. But the way Photoshop saves out PNGs is generally with a straight alpha. And Redshift is expecting a pre-multiplied alpha. So the way we're gonna combat that, and I wanna use a color layer anyway because I have two different layers I'm gonna eventually merge, but you can combat that in a color layer. So if I bring this into a color layer, oh, lost my connection, boom, and then, oh man, little circles don't wanna connect. There we go. Um, connect it right there like that. You'll see we pretty much get what we want, except um, what's really happening is because I have this layer turned on, we're still not getting what we want. It's just merging it over this black color that we had there. And so when you initially bring in uh, an RS color layer node, it's gonna look exactly like this when you hook it up. And you wanna check this box here that says advanced overlay options, and you'll get this pre-multiplied alpha. And we're gonna uncheck that to get exactly what we want. And so now you'll see it takes all those white areas and turns them into a proper alpha. Um, and knows now that this is actually a straight alpha instead of a pre-multiplied alpha. So that's looking good. We've got all that exactly how we want, um, except it's not actually transparent. We can't see that there's actually one of these seeds inside. So let me hit Control Z, move that back there. Let's start working with our transparency, uh, transparent layer. So I'm going to swap this out in the base. And you'll see we get our transparent layer. And uh, I have a little bit of reflection going on and just a little bit of transparency. But for this tutorial, I'm going to bring it up just so you can see what's happening. And then I'll refine it later. And as I crank this up, you can start to see the seed inside there, just like a mega seed would go up your butt. So it's inside this bag here. And I'm gonna probably pull that back just a little bit. And that's starting to look good. So just like you would do this in manufacturing, there's gonna be a transparent base and then a label would go on top of that. They would add ink on top of that. 
So I'm going to go ahead and add this here to our layer one. And that's because we want the label to go on top of this transparency. So when we do that, it starts to look where we want it. Um, as it renders out though, you'll start to notice that our ounce number right here is coming through and that's from the opposite side. And you can see a little bit of the mega seeds coming through right in here. So it's actually still taking some of the transparency and blending it together and adding it together. So what we can do is try unchecking additive and that makes everything disappear that we just added in because this slider adjusts from a value of 100 saying, all right, grab from layer one or zero would be grab from the base layer. So we really need it to add together properly. So that's not going to fix it. And the way you fix this is by using an alpha. And so what I've done in Photoshop is created an alpha where all the purple areas are white. And then where I want the transparent area, it, it's going to be black. Actually switch that, switch exactly what I just said around. So sorry, all the purple areas are black and then the white area is going to be in the transparent area. And if I go here, you can see it right here. We've got a black bar at top, black bar at the top or, or for our purple area up here, then black bottom for our purple area down here and then white for all these areas right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and hook this up into our reflectance weight. I've got a bunch of different things here because I was trying different options. So our reflectance weight is right down here. Throw that in there and you'll instantly see the difference. Only right in this area is our transparency and then everything else is just our label coming through. It's all these uh, characteristics coming through right in there. I'm gonna go ahead and turn my buckets so this gets a little bit of a cleaner render so you can really see what I'm talking about. So I've got our radiance cache going not cash, but point cloud and really starting to smooth stuff out. The plastic's looking good, nice and rippled around the seed there. And now we don't have the ounces coming through. We don't have the mega seeds coming through and it's exactly how we want. And we've got our scissors up here lined up exactly where we want to. So if we look at our label, we can start adjusting things without really adjusting our transparency at all. So if I add the roughness up a little bit, You'll see it's going to recache. I'll just turn the buckets off again so it can have its speed back. We got a little bit of uh, different fall off there on the reflections. Rain that in. Um, I can make the highlights a lot sharper here and a lot more plastic looking by adjusting that. And you'll notice too that it's adding everything over the transparency too. So if I adjust the transparency down here, so if I crank up this weight, the reflection is really only going to be in the areas where the alpha is active. It's not affecting everything else. So I'll rein that in again, maybe add some more roughness to that. And I don't need so much reflection here and bring this down. There we go. Starting to look nice and swifty. So if we rotate around, you'll see backside is exactly how we want it to. There's no transparency coming through where we don't expect it. So that's really how you're going to do a label on this type of object. Um, if you're used to modeling and working with objects, you'll create a UV map and you can unwrap it, bring it into Photoshop and uh, start to go crazy. I probably actually, I can show that to you guys right here. So let me load this up. And you'll see this is exactly where I started. I've got our shape here. This mega is a little different than the one I decided to go with. And then um, I ended up adding purple up here too. So this is an older PSD, but it gives you the idea of, of what I meant. Um, so if I go back into Photoshop, I wanna show you one last thing, and that is working with a can. So the reason I'm revisiting this is um, in our live stream the other night, we were talking about how to do a label. And so I started with the built-in can here. So under load object preset, there's a bunch of objects you can bring in and under broadcast and then packaging, you can get a can of soda. So I was having an issue where um, everything was kind of flipping around and being weird. And what really happened is that um, once I had the selection 
going on here, I didn't have it set to cylinder or cylindrical like this is here. So what I need to do is create a material and replace this and make sure it's set to cylindrical. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring in a redshift light. I'm gonna do a dome light and we'll just do an HGRI really quick. Throw that there. Twitch just gave me a notification, thank you. <laughs> um, where was I? Right here, launch browser, and I'm gonna do just a metal pack. How about this one? That should work fine. Processing textures, and I don't really want a background, so I'm gonna uncheck enable background here, and so we get this nice clean slate. So you can see this looks pretty good. Um, I don't have my progressive rendering turned on, so let me turn that on, and we'll do like 128. And we probably don't even need that many samples. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be too high. Oh, well. So um, I've got my soda can. I've got my material here. I'm going to go in and find this texture, which is right here. So I'm going to take that from here and just steal it and create a new Redshift material. And the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to build it with an aluminum base and then throw that on top so right here we'll do that and in our shader when i select this go into our presets and just choose aluminum so we got a nice aluminum can and um, if this was actually properly uv wrapped i could probably make the whole can um, aluminum but right now it's got this selection tag to split up the top and bottom. That's just how this can is built. So now that I've got the texture copy and pasted from the original, I'm just gonna add this texture here, paste it here, and should just give it to me, right? No, not going to. Let me copy and paste that one more time. That's all I had to do last time was Take this whole thing. I don't think I grabbed preset before. I think that's the issue. And go back into my shader here. There we go. Yep, I just didn't have that um, beginning part. Add this to my diffuse. And in just a second, it should start to add everything together. If I go like that, you'll see the diffuse goes on just like that. So that's looking pretty good, I guess. It's merging it with the, the reflection and the metal. So, you know, that's okay. But we're going to do what we did with the last one. So we're going to start with this metal base. And I'm going to disconnect this right here. Maybe. Well, let me grab it. There we go. And we'll go into the blender. So material blender. Throw this as our base. We'll go like this. Here, I'm going to copy and paste this guy there. Throw this in here to diffuse, which I've already got. And change this to something like, do paper. How about that? That should work. Our out color, go into layer one. And we're going to start adding this in. So I went in and whoop, I need to check layer one and slide up this here. So in a second, you'll start to see that come together, hopefully. Right? Paper added together. Did my white not stick? There we go. All right, so now that's really starting to feel like it's added, uh, excuse me, added together and that the aluminum is underneath and then we've got this kind of label painted onto it. Um, the highlights are a little bit hot on the aluminum, so I'm gonna go in and change it around a little bit, maybe adjust the roughness up some. That's spreading it out a little too much. That's making it look a little weird. How about we just bring the weight down? How does that help? And then maybe in here we can add more of like a red shine to it. That's starting to feel a little better. And then I'm going to crank down the diffuse right here because we don't actually need any diffuse since we put 
the texture on another layer or another material. Now we're starting to get this really nice clean look. And just for giggles, I want to see if it picks up the UV map. I'm going to delete the selection tag and delete that out of here and see if it works. Yeah, so what you'll see is it starts to wrap around the top there because the UV map isn't set up right. So I'm going to go ahead and back step a little bit. And if you want to add in another soda can aluminum tag, you can do that just through a material. Here, we'll set this to aluminum and go ahead and throw that there. So now we've got it all set up. So it looks pretty physically accurate. We've got a nice aluminum top. We've got this label all around the sides here. Let's rotate around and go ahead and just do a little bit of undersampling. There we go. Now if we look at the bottom too, because it's underneath, it's adding up all together and it all looks cohesive and nice. All right, guys, I'm going to wrap it up here. So thanks so much for watching and for everyone that's been coming out on Thursdays to the live streams and asking questions. I love it. Thank you so much for interacting. If you want to follow along and know when we're doing live streams and when new tutorials are coming out, you can follow me at underscore F-I-V-E, the word five, numeral 31, uh, on Twitter, and then at Brograph on Twitter as well. And we always make announcements of when our next live streams are coming and the next tutorials are coming out. Um, you can also check out brograph.com and check out the new Slack uh, they've got set up there, which is brograph.com slash Slack. And then come in, ask us questions, leave show topic ideas there. And my website is 5five-31.com. And I've got a calendar there of tutorial ideas and dates that they'll be releasing and live stream calendar as well. All right. Thank you so, so much again. And I'll talk to you soon.